Hello and welcome to the tutorial for Electro BIM by Design Master. If this is your first time watching these videos, I highly recommend starting from the beginning, as I'll be making changes to the same project throughout. If you'd like to follow along, links to the tutorial project and written tutorial are available in the description below. For this video, we'll look at Electro BIM's calculations, selective coordination features, and customization. As we've gone through and made modifications to devices in this project, ElectroBIM has updated things like the voltage drop and fault current at that device as the changes were happening. However, this doesn't show the full picture. It isn't looking for changes beyond that device or updating values for devices we aren't actively viewing. Doing a full project wide recalculation takes time, and larger projects take longer to calculate. So, running that calculation every time we change something isn't very helpful. Instead, after making several changes, we can run the calculate whole project command to catch everything up. Because it's our first time running the command in this project, it's giving us a warning that the state of the project may change due to how ElectroBIM functions. If there are breaker sizes or circuit descriptions we haven't already specified through ElectroBIM, they may change. We'll confirm that we understand and want to calculate. And when the calculation finishes, ElectroBIM will provide a schedule of any circuits that changed during the calculation. In our case, the rating parameter changed for the circuits on panel B. In an actual project, we would go to those panels and check whether we're okay with these new values, but that isn't necessary here. Something to note, whenever you recalculate, ElectroBIM will update this schedule and pull it up again to remind you of any changes. If you are finished with the schedule, you can delete it, and ElectroBIM will stop alerting you. Now that we've run a full calculation, we can check on the data for our fault current. To do that, go to the Schedules dropdown and run the Fault Schedule command. When the schedule is first created, it will show things like the fault at each device, the device's AIC rating, voltage and wire size, and so on. Once it's been created, we can modify it just like any other Revit schedule. So let's do that using Revit's insert command. We'll take out the short circuit rating comments and add the ElectroBIM shared parameters for the panel bus amps and panel distribution system and press OK to save those changes. Again, this is a typical Revit schedule. So any other changes like fixing the titles or where these columns are placed can be made through Revit functionality. Let's check out the voltage drop schedule next. Again, go to the Schedules dropdown, and this time we'll select Voltage Drop. And again, a normal Revit schedule that you can customize if needed. In a previous video, we showed how feeders and branch circuits will automatically upsize if their voltage drop gets too high. But there might be situations where you want the automation to behave differently or not happen at all. Let's look at how you can modify that. We'll go to the Customization dropdown and back to Project Options, which we visited briefly in a previous video. This time, we're looking at the Voltage Drop section. Here is where you can set whether, when, and how the upsizing occurs, among other things. A quick note, our voltage drop thresholds by default are 2% for feeders and 3% for branch circuits. We'll come back to that soon. For now, we'll set upsize branch circuits to no, press OK to save our changes, then run the Calculate Whole Project command again to see how that affects the numbers. And you can see the circuit that was upsized before has been reset to number 12 wires, which puts the voltage drop on that circuit above 
the 3% threshold we specified in project options, which in turn causes ElectroBIM to display this warning. Now, if you have a much larger project, again, recalculating the entire project could take a while. If you're only working on one section of your distribution and you only need to see the results within that section, you can do a partial recalculation. To see what I'm talking about, we'll go into Panel Edit, select Transformer T1 from the list, set the feeder length to Fixed and 10, and close the dialog box. We'll pull up the fault schedule again to see the changes more readily. Then run the Calculate Part of Project command. With this command, you can select where you want the calculation to start, and it will only run for the selected device and the devices downstream of it. We'll select Transformer T1 as our starting point. Press Calculate to run the calculation. And as you can see, the fault has been recalculated for the downstream devices. Something important to note, if a change occurs far upstream of the device you select, the calculation may or may not account for it. For example, if we modify util and up the fault from 55,000 to 65,000, then calculate from T1 again, nothing happens. Because we didn't recalculate MDP, that number did not change. Therefore, nothing downstream of it will change either. To get those changes, we need to recalculate the entire project or do a partial calculation from MDP. Next, we're going to look at selective coordination. Not every project calls for it, but we'll do a quick overview so you'll know how these features work should the need arise. First, we need to set the specific breakers in our system. For distribution equipment, that's done through the panel edit command. In drafting views, it will ask if you want to select a device. Press escape to bypass that. We'll go to transformer T1, find the OCP trip, and press the Select Breaker Curve button to specify the breaker. These sections at the top can be used to browse for the breaker you need, or you can use the Search button. Let's assume the contractor will be using Eaton breakers that are in the PDG model line and the thermal magnetic version. It will list every valid result but the green rows are the only ones compatible with this trip size and voltage. We'll go with the first green one, press OK to save those settings, and OK again to go back to the transformer definition. Next, we'll select panel DP, go to the main disconnect trip to set that curve, go to search, we'll stick with Eaton, and this time we'll do the PDC-3 model in a 400 amp frame. Select the top one, press OK a couple of times to save that, then press exit to close the dialog box. Now that we have a couple of breakers defined, we can graph the curves to see if they're coordinated. From a drafting view like this one, run the graph insert command. From here, you can select which breakers to add to this graph, set the titles and notes, and modify any devices already listed. We'll press the Add Distribution Equipment Curve button and select T1 from the list. Then we'll do it again for DP. Since DP can have two curves set, it's asking which one we want on the graph. We're doing the main disconnect. Then we'll press OK and insert it on the drafting view. As with the feeder schedule in the single line diagram video, you are specifying the location of the top left corner. So we've got our curves laid out and it looks like there's significant overlap, which is not great. Let's see what we can do about that. 
we'll run the panel edit command and select the curve for DP. We could try tweaking the settings for the breaker we had picked out, but in this case, I think we'll just go with a different size breaker altogether. We'll set the main disconnect trip to 250 amps, then go back into the breaker settings, give this Eaton PDC2 PXR20 a try, and the graph will show the new curve, which gives us the space we need. When you first install ElectroBIM, in addition to the project settings we've already looked at, there are also customizations for things like wire and conduit sizes, and which wires should be used for automation. For a quick peek at how that works, we'll go to the Customization dropdown and run the Wire Ampacities command. When you tell ElectroBIM to size, feeders, and branch circuits automatically, this dialog box controls which wire sizes and materials are used based on the ampacity required. It has enough controls defined to be usable out of the box, but the sizing table is designed to be modified to fit your company's standards. One popular change is at the 400 amp level, where instead of using 600 kc mil for the conductors, they'll use two runs of 3 aught. We'll change the equipment ground wire size to number 6 to match, the number of parallel runs to 2, and because the wire size has changed, we need to change these X and R values to 0 0.042 and 0 0.077 to match what we have in the 200 amp row. There is a conversion of those figures when parallel runs are involved, but ElectroBIM will do that for us on the back end. We'll press exit to close the dialog box. Then run the panel edit command and select panel MDP to see how those changes have carried over. We've made some customization changes over the course of this project, but they only persist within this project. If we started a new project, none of those changes would carry over. That said, there are two ways you can set up your customization to affect future projects. One way is through Revit templates. Simply open the template file, run the various customization commands, make the changes you need to make, then save the template. Any projects you make from that template will come in with that customization. The other way is to set up your customization in a project, then run the export command. This command saves your customization as an external file that can then be imported into other projects, including those already in progress. We'll set a file location and name, then save it by pressing OK. You can then go into Other Projects and run the Import command. It's the same interface, just select the file you want to import, and these checkboxes allow you to do a partial import. So if you, for example, need the project options settings, but you've made changes to the wire ampacities table that you don't want to lose, you can uncheck that box to preserve those changes. Press the OK button, and the selected customization will be imported into the project. Those are the basics for ElectroBIM's calculations, selective coordination features, and customization. In the next video, we'll briefly go over how you can take the concepts from these tutorials into new projects and where to go from here. See you there.